Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. Today, we have a lovely guest with us. Nicole Musimbi is a UI UX designer and analyst at Demetra, an international company with a mission to deliver AG tech globally to farmers. She is involved in translating requirements into attractive user interfaces by understanding business requirements and user perspectives. Thank you so much for joining us, Nicole. Thank you for having me. All right, so let's get right into it. Tell us why you were interested in computer engineering. Um, so first, I was like, you know, curious to know a little bit more about, you know, computer science and also um, because all I knew about computer science was like, okay, so I'm gonna going to fix computers and all this stuff. And I, I wanted to learn more, you know, so, and exactly when I entered computer science, I discovered that it's more than fixing just computers. Yeah. Well, I feel like that happens so often when, when you know you're interested in a topic and then you realize how much you don't know about the topic once you start studying it. Sure. But, <laughs> um, so, so take us through a brief roadmap of your schooling and you know how that led to such a successful career that you have now. Um, so I spent six years on elementary school and then six year on um, high school and where I learned you know um, biology and chemistry and then um, in 2015 I joined the university uh, and I started you know the final fact is that I started in communication so I was thinking like okay so in communication I learned to use you know computers and fixing computer and then after just one month I realized that no no it's the, it did not um, <laughs> what I wanted so I changed it and yeah so people were like okay so you are moving from communication to computer science so it's gonna be hard for you a lot of stuff but again I managed and I did four years um yeah I learned you know like um machine learning um um AI and also um, since we are talking about the paths to my career and also blockchain because I used uh, on my final paper uh, I I did a system uh, which helped to you know to uh, build a um, system which helped to record uh, land information and I used blockchain um, technology since um, it's helped you know to uh, with uh, it uh, it helped to have that traceability you know history and also you know if uh, in the eastern part of DRC a lot of cases which are being treated at the coast are related to land so I wanted to um, to give my contribution. Um, you know, to resolving this land problem because it causes a lot of uh, conflict and also violence. Uh, yeah, so it, I wanted just to contribute on ending those uh, land conflict. So uh, in building that system, which can help, because even my uncle, I remember that year, he had the same problem. So in some cases, you might buy, you know, a portion of land and then after years, um, someone can just come and say, okay, this is my, my, you know, is this land belongs to me. So you are like, so the money, you know, you, you, you were just saving, saving to buy the portion of land and then you find yourself out, you know, so it's painful and some, um, he's all saying it's created conflict and all those. So I wanted to create that system which can help, you know, have this traceability and also, um, um, even uh, yesterday, I read an article published for uh, four uh, weeks ago, which um, is also talking about, you know, I, I don't know if you heard about the volcano eruption, which occurs in, in Goma. And yeah, yeah so the, the government decided to give, you know, a portion of land to people who were, you know, who um, were the most uh, touched by the situation. And then the, the article we were reading yesterday was just, telling how um you know this situation um again um bring i can say bring uh out other conf land conflict so it seems like the the land which were given to those people uh, and the, the the state government or uh, people who are in charge of that and then came after and saying okay so this land should not belong to you it belongs to other people so this kind of things 
are uh, most of the time happen in the eastern, even the DRC in general, but uh, most of the cases in the eastern part of DRC. Yeah. Wow, that what an incredible thing to pioneer too. I'm I'm sure there were many roadblocks that you came across trying to do that. Um, yeah. So, uh, go ahead. Yeah. Good, thank you. So, um, I as I was saying, you know, I tried first to um to you know to um to do research about that and getting information. In some cases, it's hard, you know, because as I was saying, most of the um, the person who are involved in that, uh, in those um, unauthorized activities, are some cases uh, the uh, member, I mean, the member of the government. So it's really hard yes. uh, to kind of, yeah, yeah, that we and try to manage. Would you say that's one of your prouder achievements or are there other ones that you'd like to speak to? Um, apart from that, I can say, um, so we have a friend, we were working on another um, a mobile solution called ESC, which is a fin uh, included in FinTech. And they, they, we realized that because, you know, most of people in uh, Africa and especially in DRC do not have bank account. So they use, uh, we use mobile money, you know, to kind of do transaction sending, receiving, and also sometimes buying. So um, what the, the, we have right now, we have just the possibility to, uh, to use, you know, with the USS code, it's kind of a long process to, you know, to just do a single transaction, you have to pass over five to six step, you know, to send money. So in some cases, boring, and in some cases also, um, as it's a long process, you might even uh, do some, you know, human error and then uh, losing your money. So we tried to, with we, we tried to build a mobile application which will have to like doing quickly um, transaction in just like seconds. So that's to create also a user friend interface uh, for user to, uh, to be able to use and like, yeah, yeah, you know, to avoid also um, yeah, like spend losing their money. Yeah. Wow, that definitely sounds like you know an achievement I would be proud of too. That's incredible. Thank you for sharing that. Um, so Demetra, if I'm not mistaken, is located in Canada, correct? The company you work for? Um, sorry, can you go Oh, yet? sorry, yes. Demetra, yeah, the company yeah. you work for, it's located in Canada, correct? Exactly, yeah. So um so I work in um I started working on uh with uh, blockchain guru first um just after being graduated i joined um blockchain guru as an intern and it was really <laughs> some um sometimes challenging you know like joining an international company and first uh you know the language background because in congo we most right. of the time speak french and then yeah so you have to meet people who are speaking english mm -hmm. and yeah so um, apart from that, you know, working on this diverse space with different people, different background, it was quite uh, challenging. And also it was, you know, um, interesting. And it, it was also challenging in terms, of, in terms of, you know, we had a lot of expect and I did not, I was not, you know, I was coming from a university. So I had to do a um, lot of researches and also uh, yeah to try to up skills and to keep um upgraded i mean up to date so that i might be you know um yeah so i started his, yeah researches and then yeah since i got opportunity to learn and to do research to watch uh tutorial on youtube and all those stuff yep. and after some month I, I was like working with um i mean has a quality analyst and i had to work on uh, different projects such as samples doing some tests doing live tests with the developer team and then yeah and also, um, you know, have also the chance to work as UI design. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, doing those user wow. interface, you know, translating um, business requirement mm -hmm. to um, user interfaces. Yeah, so kind of stuff. Yeah. That's that's amazing. And I, it's funny you mentioned YouTube tutorials because I feel like those are useful in all 
lines of work. <laughs> yeah, so when, you know, sometimes when I just remember, you know, the, the thoughts I had when I joined computer science, like, okay, I'm going to be fixing computers and just discovering all those areas that I did not know, you know, before yes. joining um, um, these companies. So I'm like, okay, so we have a lot of stuff that we need to, to get by learning, you know, by still uh, doing researches and also uh, by, you know, um, as I said, I joined as a intern, but just for maybe I can say for other um, young women, just we had to, to be open, you know, to search for internship and also maybe to companies to just give uh, opportunity to other young, I mean, to young women to get um, opportunity to get internship because it's helped, you know, to even if, for us to invest in ourselves and to get, you know, um, more knowledge and to keep uh, updated. Yeah. Absolutely. And, you know, speaking of young women, I know you've done some charitable work. Could you talk a bit about your work with Women's Voices? Oh, okay. So apart from that, I'm like doing some, um, I'm volunteering. As I was saying, you know, the eastern part of DRC, we we have been facing a conflict for years. So I'm just like, you. so what's my contribution, you know, to um, to to end those um, conflict? And yeah, so I have, I before joining Women Voices, when I was in high school, I I was working on child parliament. You know, I was elected as a president, and then wow. I was in school. I was working with Women Voices. Um, so we were gathering together all the the women on the university to kind of working on our confidence and also because it was a Christian university. You know, just building our faith to grass and yeah and this I mean the same year or the year before I got also um connected to global network of women peace builder I'm also volunteering there as a youth peace builder influencer so um yeah I got to meet a lot of amazing people and also we have developed sad some projects um for example now we are working on a um a pro project called Taji Taji Swahili word, which means crown, you know, to just kind of giving, because we have discovered that, you know, um, living in a conflictual situation is sometimes uh, create, you know, negative mindset. So we are trying to um, to um, to profile, you know, uh, women who are showing their resilience in our uh, community to the young women so that they can see okay despite what we are, uh, we are facing right now we can have a bright future we can do also a lot of things and we have potential because sometimes they're like okay so I'm just waiting for the day I will die because you know all this stuff are too high for me so uh, when they see other model of women who are doing uh, great things and yeah they were like okay so I have also potential then I can do more than and yeah, what I can imagine, yeah. I can't emphasize what amazing work that is that you're doing. And I think that's the best way to do it, you know, lead by example. Um, Thank you so much. <laughs> and, you know, on, on that topic as well, computer engineering is, I think in most countries, a very male dominated field. Um, and I know you mentioned some advice earlier, but do you have any other advice for young women that, you know, would like to follow in a similar career path as you did? Yeah, so um, as, I was, uh, as I was saying previously, just to, to kind of invest in ourselves, and also it's true, like we have many, you know, male-dominated domain, but we can find, as I was saying, when I joined, in, uh, when I joined computer science, people were like, okay, so you are moving from communication to computer science, so you will not um, succeed and all those stuff. We can find all those negativities, but we need to push, you know, to push on going on and also working hard. So, because sometimes we may require to sleep late night. So they should not be afraid of sleeping uh, late night because of doing some researches. Yeah, so we, yeah, to also search for um, internship and also to get a good mentor because a uh, good mentor also lead and guide us to, and also help to just share uh, what they had his challenges to help us to not, you know, um, doing the same thing. And in some cases, help also to uh, to get um, in a 
time recorded what they they get in years because they have all, already passed by there and they can be good guys for us yeah. right. absolutely i mean and i think it that's great especially great advice because i'm sure that it can feel very isolating at times um being a woman in this field or just being in this field it's a very difficult field to be in so not being afraid of the hard work and also having somebody there that you're, you know, you're not afraid to ask for help to them. And also so that you just don't feel like you're alone in the process. I think that's probably can be very beneficial. Oh, Nicole, can you hear me? Exactly, yeah. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, you okay. can hear you. Great, great. I know. I love the Zoom technology. Sometimes it's <laughs> it's not yeah, always the best. And, I know, think everyone's used to it at this point. <laughs> yeah. Um, so my final question for you, um, you've had such a successful career and you're already you're so young already, and I feel like you're an expert in your field. So if you could change anything about the industry as you see it is now, what might that be? Um, so the thing that I might change uh, will be, you know, um, this fact of not having a lot of women in the field because women are amazing and incredible. So I might, I will give, you know, um, opportunity to women to just, you know, having internship, mentoring them so that they can also enter in the field. Yeah, I think this will be the major thing that I will change. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I second that. <laughs> um, well, thank you so, so much for joining us, Nicole. This was very informative, inspiring. Um, I very much appreciate it. I know other people do as well. Thank you so much. <laughs>